Honey Heart C. Well, hello there, mini fans. I am so excited today because today is a painting day. I love anything creative and painting and crafting, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. I have one of the new models from the Briar Classic size or Freedom Series size. This is Malik. This is a brand new mold that came out this year, and he's going to get a brand new Halloween-y spooky makeover because I want to paint him woo, to look exactly like this cutie right here. This is Boo. This was a little Briar plushie that was released this year that I did not have a chance to pick up. So instead of buying him as a plushie, I might as well paint him as a real Briar. So Malik is going to end up looking like little Boo here. So it should be a pretty fun, simple, easy craft. Boo is a black horse with some spooky Halloween ghosts, skulls, pumpkins, and bats on him. Let's go ahead and start painting. I've got my black acrylic paint. Give it a good shake. Go in with my black paint. Paint, and here we go. Just paint right on him. Oh, I love this new Arabian mold. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? Whenever I saw this, I was like, yes, more Arabians. Of course I'm in love with Arabians. Shuggy is an Arabian and you guys know she is my love. I absolutely love my horse. Painting Malik, a beautiful Arabian horse is something I'm definitely going to enjoy. So just make sure I gotta get his whole entire coat painted in black. Now this black paint is a little bit sheer, so I'll probably have to go over it with a second coat, no problem. I always like to paint in really, really thin layers. All right, let's turn him around. He doesn't look too different. His chestnutty color is pretty dark, but I like to paint with really thin coats of paint and then build up the coat and the color more and more and more. That way it avoids streaks because if you do like a big giant glob of paint, especially really thick paint, it can leave really bad streaks on the model. So you wanna make sure you do several, several coats. It's better to take your time doing several coats instead of one really thick coat. So this paint is really sheer, so I'm not thinning it out with any water. I'm just going for it. Might as well, right? It's Halloween time. Paint his little cute face all black. All right, first layer is done. Now I need to go in with a second coat of paint because this paint is really thin, so you can see some serious splotchness going on here. So just go ahead and give him a second coat. There we go, yes, I love second coats because now it really starts coming together and you can see the true, true colors. All right, the black is painted on him. Now it's time to start going in and painting the little mask that is on Boo. So that's a really beautiful purple color. I have this purple Halloween set of paints, but these are kind of looking really old. Let's check in on this purple and let's just, ooh, yeah, that's not looking good. Well, there's kind of enough in there though. Let's see. Oh no, it's all dried out. No. Okay, so now we gotta go to plan B since this is all dry. I'm sticking my paintbrush in there and look at that. It's just clumpy and dry. You can't even use any of that paint. Now looking at the picture, it almost looks like the purple of his mask and the purple of his hair are two different colors. The purple on his mask looks a little bit more pinker while the purple on his hair kind of looks more like a true purple. So I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna go in with two different types of purples that I have. One for his mane and tail. I'm gonna go in with the purple iris and for the mask and for the little bat decal. Cows, I'm gonna go in with this one, which is called Velvet Crush. Give it a good shake. So to paint the mask on him, which is like a little bat shape. And of course I don't own this plushie, so I'm just gonna have to wing it. Get it, wing it. <laughs> so to paint the mask, let's just do it. Let's just go in and do it. So just gonna go down and paint the bat shape right across his eye. There's one side, and now we're gonna have the mask connect on this side. So just bring it over and up. Now this one, we don't have his hair, his little forelock coming down. So we will actually be able to see the bat tip on top. And of course, I'm gonna shape all this paint with the black. Just wanna put the base of it down to get the overall shape. All right, there's his mask for now. Now again, this is just the main outline. We're gonna go in and detail it with black a little bit later. So now we're gonna do the little bat detail and it looks like he's got one bat kind of on his face and one on his back. So the one on his face, of course he doesn't have as much room as the plushie does. 
plush has this really big, round, kind of cartoony face, which Malik does not have. So instead of painting that bat on his face, I'm just gonna substitute it right on his neck. So I'm just gonna move that bat just down on his neck, just because I wanna fill out his body a little bit more with this little Halloween print. So I'm just gonna move this bat like right over. And I wanna keep his face clear of any decals. So that little bat is gonna be moved right here. And again, it's gonna look kinda of weird for now until I go in and do the details with black. But just getting the main shape of the bat is all I kinda of want. So kinda of little wings, little kinda of curve. So I'm just getting the outline. I know this looks like, what is she doing? But it will turn out, it always turns out, a little bat head and leave plenty of room to do the little ears, which again, it this looks really, really uh, right now, but it will turn out. I just wanna make sure I fill it in and get that color all filled in. So there's one bat that I moved from his face and then now I'm going to move one down on his lower back. So this bat is kind of twisted on its side. So turn him up like this and same thing. I'm gonna do the same type of little bat design right here, his little head. And we'll do his little bat ears later. Just leave the room for it and fill it in. Oh, he's looking cute. I know he's looking really cute. All right, the other side of him, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna move that little bat that is on his cheek over to his neck and another little bat kind of on his back. All right, now we've got his... <laughs> his little purple splotches on him. And now I'm just gonna let these dry. All right, everything is all dry. Now I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush and I'm gonna start now shaping and doing the details to fix these bats and the mask. I want it to actually have that bat shape. So of course, I'm now going to take my black and this is the important part now because this is now where I'm gonna start shaping the bat. we go, isn't that cute? Now I'm just gonna go into each one of the bats and do exactly the same thing. All right, pretty cute, huh? So the bats have now been painted. And I'm gonna go in and just kind of fix the mask a little bit, just kind of sharpen it, just do the exact same thing. All right, the mask, it looks good. Now I just gotta go in and fill in his little eye holes. He's gotta be able to peek through his mask and see. So very carefully make it so he can see. He looks like a Halloween superhero. All right, so bats and mask are done. Now let's go in with these cute little orange little pumpkins. I have my orange from this little mini kit, but ooh, yeah, that's not looking too good. Let's kind of poke at it. Yeah, this may not work. Let's, oh wait, it's actually kind of loose. All right, let's stir it up. That's a beautiful Halloween orange. I got this like at Michael's and it was like a Halloween paint kit and I love it because I think the colors are truly the perfect Halloween colors. So maybe we will use this orange. It's not looking too bad. All right, I think I saved it. All right, orange pumpkins, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Just put the outline in and then go in and do the detail a little bit later. So for this orange, I'm gonna have to add a lot more water because it's a lot thicker paint. I can tell that it's a lot thicker. So I'm gonna have to add water, water, water to my brush. All right, and he's got a little pumpkin right on kind of shoulder area here, but I still need to leave room for a ghost and a skull. Ghost will probably go here, skull, will kind of go on his leg a little bit. So I'm gonna put the pumpkin right there. Oh, but I still have to leave room for this little skull too. It's all right, we'll make them all fit. We'll make them all fit. Little sidewaysy pumpkin right here. For the pumpkin, it's really easy. Just gonna put kind of a big circly blob right on the shoulder. We'll probably need two coats of paint and a little pumpkin stem. Another little pumpkin right here on his hindquarters. Big blob. and a little pumpkin stem, and turn them around, do the same thing to the other side. This one's got a little tiny bit of some chunky paint in here because my paint is old. 
little pumpkin stem. I'm so happy I was able to use this Halloween paint. I love it. Would have been great if I could have used that purple color, but this will work out just fine. I think these colors look so good. And you guys know it, there is no rules whenever it comes to any creative project. You are completely in control. You are the creator. All right, got my four pumpkins on. I'm just gonna let them dry. Now that that first coat has dried, I'm gonna go in with a second coat of paint and fill it in. Sometimes in these little mini paint pots, the paint quality is not the best. And on top of that, I find that oranges, yellows, and even some really light greens at times tend to be really sheer. So you need to do like a second, third coat on those colors usually. So that's exactly what we're doing. Just giving it the time that it needs to build it up. And these pumpkins look like they still need a little bit of some coverage. So I'm just gonna go in with a third coat. Now, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I might as well go in and paint my ghost and skulls. So normally whenever I paint any white on model horses, I go in with an off-white. It just tends to look more realistic, but because this one is based off of a cute little plushie, I'm just gonna go in with some really bright white, give it a good shake. All right, so we've got a skull on the neck and a skull on the leg. Do the little outline for the skull. Pretty easy again. I'm just gonna do a, just a white little blob and I'm not gonna go completely on his leg. I'm just gonna go right here, kind of on his elbow. Oh, these are gonna be so fun to paint. All right, same thing with the other side. We got one on his neck and one on his leg. And we've got three little ghosts, two on his body, one on his leg. These ones I'm gonna paint a little bit longer than the skulls, just a little bit. Ooh, there's a little dry crusty. Do a little ghost. Now, since I already have my white out, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint some little socks. Once that dries, go in and cover up all of that splotchiness. All right, these pumpkins are dry. Now we're gonna go in and start sculpting. Start with the cute little pumpkins. So same thing, just gonna use my black and just kind of help me carve out their shape. Now I'm just gonna go in with my toothpick and paint the little faces on. Now we'll shape the skulls. Oh, the little skulls look so cute. All right, now we're gonna work on the ghost. So I can just go in with my black and just kind of reshape them, make them smaller, make them shorter. Just kind of clean up the paint a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in with a tan kind of natural color to create his hoof. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This paint is a little old. I haven't used this in a while, so let's just mix it on up. Give it a good mixy. All right, now go in with that natural color and paint each one of his hooves. Even though the plushie doesn't have it this way, this is just what would naturally be on him. 
To paint his mane and tail, now for some weird reason to me in this photo, it looks like his mane and tail are a completely different purple color than the design on Boo's face, like the little bats and the mask. So I'm just gonna go in with a different color purple. Again, I don't have him in person, so I don't know if that's true. It could be the same color purple, but I'm just gonna go in with a different one. So I'm gonna use this acrylic paint, this purple iris color, shake it up. And of course, there's never a wrong way to do a craft project. I just think he'd look kinda cool, something a little different. So I'm just gonna paint his whole entire mane. And it doesn't really matter if the purple matches or not because I think I'm actually gonna go in and paint all of the skulls and ghosts glow in the dark. Don't you think that would be cool? I think that would look so spooky and awesome. He has the most beautiful tail too. I love this brand new sculpt. I am really excited about this one. I'm so happy that this worked out on this brand new mold. I'm really excited to add him to my collection. And same thing with his mane. And he also has this wild piece of hair that kind of goes down here. So I'm just gonna follow this piece all the way down on his body. Oh, that looks so cool. And paint the hair that goes up over here and the piece that falls into his face. Ooh, yeah, see, I'm glad I did a different color purple or else it'll look like these purples kind of blend together. Of course, I need to make room for this one little shade of black that he has in his mane. So right in the middle, just add that black in. This horse is so cool. <gasps> This is so cool. He looks amazing as a model. Now I'm gonna seal all the color in by using my Duraclear matte varnish. Give it a really good shake. And now I'll just go in and seal everything in with some Duraclear on a watered down brush. Sometimes this stuff can be really tricky. You put too much, your horse can end up glossy looking. So you just wanna water down your Duraclear just a little bit and paint over everything. And this stuff is wonderful because it actually seals in the paint color and protects it from chipping and scratching. I wanna make sure I get the hooves really, really well. Since he's gonna be standing on a shelf and his hooves, and the ear tips, believe it or not, get the most wear and tear. And their bellies too, if they're a very tippy model. And this one is. This one, for some weird reason, has been tipping over a lot. I do not want the paint to scratch at all. All right, now to add the spooky fun in, I'm gonna use my glow in the dark acrylic paint. And I'm gonna give this a really good shake because it's been a long time since I used it. All right, this is gonna be so, so, so cute. I'm really excited. All right, so each one of these little ghosts and skulls, I'm just gonna go over with a coat of glow in the dark just to add that spooky fun to this project I think this is gonna be so cute I love glow in the dark too I just think it's just so so fun you know just will bring this horse up to another level All right, the last step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and gloss his eyes and nostrils with some clear nail polish. Just a nice little last step to kind of add the glossiness back to his eyes. Just kind of makes him stand out just a little bit there. And gloss his nostrils. A little wet and shiny. All right, there he is. So Boo is completed. I think he looks so good. I think he looks very close to the plushie. I am so happy to be adding this horse into my collection. All right, but now we have to see the magic. I wanna see if he glows in the dark. So let's hit the lights. Ooh. Thank you so much for joining me while I custom painted this Halloween horse. It looks like he's joined a couple of his other Halloween buddy friends. He's perfect. Again, I am so happy that I painted him. I think this new sculpture looks so perfect with him. He's just really, really cool. So thanks again. Stay creative, stay awesome, stay horse crazy, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Woo!